time loser And long to his death Oh, it feels a test of scraping Steve breaking on his brow Oh, Todd stole the handle And the train and watch Todd going Are you ready? Yes. All right, so this is a 1932 Heath Center Wing Special built in Chicago by the Heath Company. It was originally designed as a trainer, had a longer wing, actually 26 feet, and uh, was attended the Chicago's World Fair in 1933. When I purchased the airplane, it had been under a hangar. It hadn't flown since 1936. The Heath Company, who uh, was kind of specialized in race planes as well as kits, they were early kit manufacturer, uh, modified the airplane. They put a tapered wing on it, cut the wingspan from 26 feet to 18 feet, and put the raised turtle back on it. Generally cleaned it all up, and it raced at Chicago in 1933 um, at Dayton, and uh, had several different pilots at those events. They uh, later returned it to the original long wingspan, and it run around Chicago at that time. I don't know exactly the last race it was in, but uh, somewhere along the line, 1936, it crashed and was stored away. The engine is a Continental A40. It uh, is the original line of aircraft engines built by Continental and leads a direct descendant of all the Continental airplane engines that are flying around today. The factory uh, later had a cylinder head design that it was originally a single magneto. I converted this one to magneto and light speed system, electronic system, so that it would burn water fuel. Today's fuel wouldn't burn hot enough in it to uh, allow it to keep running. The plugs would foul up and of course the engine would slow down and down would come. Anyway, the modifications are we took the head, milled it 80 thousandths to increase the compression ratio. Like I said, added light speed system on it. Uh, did some work on the carburetor and it runs uh, pretty well for an old engine. Hasn't let me down totally yet. Norm Rose and I started the restoration on this in 2005. Um, Norm did a lot of the work. I helped out by getting in the way and telling him things I want to change on it. And then Ken Elwood, who's a well-known home builder here in the 60s and 70s and even up into the early 80s, uh, did some work on it for me also. As you can see by the placard on here, there's the uh, different guys that flew it. I like to joke that uh, I'm the uh, seventh guy to fly this airplane and all the other guys are dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, handling on this is, is pretty interesting. The, I'm not sure that the airspeed indicator is totally accurate, but I generally come down downwind at about 100 miles an hour turn base, maintain 100 miles an hour, and then as I approach the runway, bleed off to about 90. Um, from that point on, I don't know what the actual landing speed is because I'm too busy looking out the windshield to see where I'm at and keeping it lined up with the runway. What do you think it lands at? 80. 80? The landing gear is not suspended. In other words, it's unsprung, and so if you bounce, you need to go around. It takes a... Um, kind of a grease landing every time. It's also very sensitive to the rudder, and the same in the air, it's sensitive to all controls. It has a lot of adverse yaw with the ailerons in it. In other words, you have to uh, use opposite rudder in the turns on occasion to keep things all straight. Other than that, it's a pretty good flying airplane. It's just, you gotta be aware of the kinks. I have had one incident before I flew it when I got away from me on a high-speed taxi test where I got the engine straightened out and I cartwheeled it and tore off one of the landing gears and got the got the wing tips so I went back in the shop for repair before I could fly it but fortunately that's really the only serious incident that's happened in my 80 hours of flying it. As you can see from the instrument panel there's very little it's a simple airplane just uh, tack on or oil pressure oil temperature and airspeed and an altimeter, which again uh, don't doesn't mean much because I fly at a thousand feet most of the time. It's uh, most comfortable cruising along at 25, 2600 RPMs, and uh, again, it indicated about 110. 
So again, being a race plane and a simple airplane, there's no electrical system. The electronic ignition system is powered by a LiPo battery pack that I charge up every once in a while. I can actually run with that on for three hours uh, before I have to charge it again, but in actuality, I put both magneto and electronic system on for takeoff, switch off the electronic system when I'm cruising around, and then just switch it back on for landing, just to back up the magneto. The cockpit is 19 inches outside to outside, so it's a tight fit for most guys. Fortunately, I'm just able to get in there and move everything around. The uh, Mickey Mouse design was painted by Abby. She's a local sign painter here, very talented. And if you look at the logo, you can see the stars in there and the magic wand in Mickey's hand. The fuel tank holds it nine gallons and it burns about five gallons an hour at full throttle, which is pretty close to where I run it most of the time. It holds four quarts of oil. I'm running regular aeroshell oil in it. Uh, it gets pretty noisy in there, so I, besides my headset, inside my helmet, I have to wear earplugs too. This airplane originally had a tail skid on it, and in the course of, of taxiing around, I figured out that wasn't going to work, so I put on this cape type tail wheel and built a centering spring to keep the tail wheel centered when I touch it down. Again, it's very sensitive on takeoff, and so keeping it straight is a primary concern. Flying airplane really uh, consists of concentrating pretty a lot on keeping it straight in the air. Again, it's really sensitive to ailerons, rudder, and elevator. Um, on my landing approach, I am coming in fairly fast. The stall is very abrupt, when, and the sink rate when you be able to power back off to anything below 90, the sink rate starts going up pretty high. So, again, just uh, Coming in approach, trying to keep it lined up on the center line, feeling your way down and greasing it on is the process. All in all, the airplane is totally controllable. Uh, it's just you need to be aware of its little quirks. And I wouldn't say that it's exactly a pleasure to fly, but for me, flying the old airplanes in their stock configuration is what it's all about. So I just have to learn to live with their idiosyncrasies remember that I'm flying an old airplane. It's not an airplane for modern day pilots by any means unless they've had some experience in those. But all in all, it's a safe, flyable airplane. And it is lots of fun. Thanks for the information. And it's a beautiful aircraft.
go, Tim. All right, All right buddy. I'll see you when you land. Yeah. 
News camera. So, how do you feel right now? See, I'm feeling. Uh, I am elated that I'm back on the ground. <laughs> <laughs>